can't believe we're actually standing next to real mummies. They're over 3,000 years old. And what makes them even more special is that we know who they were. Now this is the coffin of a mummy known as Ta Bess, and it's encased in plexiglass to protect it. When Ta Bess lived in ancient Egypt, she was a singer in the temple choir. The beautiful paintings on her coffin call her the songstress of Amun. The paintings also tell us that Ta Bess was married to a barber who shaved the heads of the temple priests. This is the mummy of Nes Mut At Nehru. Her coffin says that she was the lady of the house. Now this probably meant that she took care of a home and possibly children. Her mummification was very costly because of the fine linens and the beautiful beadwork adorning the body. Mummies were hidden for centuries deep within the protective walls of the pyramids. Mummies were also buried in other sacred places like the cliffs of the Valley of the Kings. The mummies were laid to rest in beautiful burial chambers that were cool, dry, and dark. Hundreds of paintings decorated the walls with scenes of ancient Egyptian men and women silently working, suspended in time for thousands of years. People have always wanted to look beneath the wrappings of the mummies to see what's really underneath there. But that can be a pretty risky business because mummies are extremely fragile. I guess you would be too if you were over 3,000 years old. Touching or moving mummies too much can cause them to crumble. So, how do we get a look at them? Well, let's go to Kalamazoo, Michigan and find out. Mummies aren't moved very often, but this is a special occasion. This mummy has a doctor's appointment. The mummy's head was unwrapped before it was donated to the Kalamazoo Public Museum, and now the curator wants to find out more about the mummy. Today, we'll look under the wrappings as 20th century medicine probes secrets that are over 2,500 years old. This is the CT scanner room at Bronson Methodist Hospital. The CT scanner is a special kind of x-ray machine that takes detailed pictures without damaging the mummy. The x-ray session is being supervised by Dr. Robert Fosmo, a radiologist, and Dr. Lorelei Corcoran, an Egyptologist. Patient? Mummy. Age? About 2,500 years. Physician? myself. All right, let's see what the CT can show us that's beneath the wrappings. There we have it. That's fantastic. What can we see here on the screen? Well, beneath all of the wrappings, we have the mummy. Here's the head. Here are the eyes. This is the nose. Here is a mouth where you can see the teeth, the jaw, the neck, hands. The hands are crossed on the chest. 
We can even see the individual fingers of the hands. The CT scan shows a skeleton in good condition, but it also indicates some dental problems. These are the teeth, and they are very much worn down, flattened. Many are missing. They're really in extremely bad shape. I think it was the sand that's responsible for that. They lived on a desert, and the sand would get into their bread and all of their food. Every time they ate, the sand would wear down their teeth. This is the head. We see the eyes. They're intact. You see the sinuses. They are clear, except the central sinus region, which is white. Probably in this case, the brain was extracted through the nose. This is the pelvis, and we can tell this is a female by the shape of the pelvis. Also, I see a certain whiteness of the joint. This often follows childbirth. So she was a mother. Correct. The x-rays tell us part of the story. But we also want to know, what did this mummy look like? Using the CT scans, a forensic artist will create a model of her face. The first step in the reconstruction of the mummy is to make life-size drawings from each of the scans. Ray Evenhouse uses the CT scans to create an exact three-dimensional replica of the mummy's skull. The next step is to transfer the drawings onto styrofoam board, which gives me a layer in the skull. And then when we stack all the layers on top of each other, we've recreated the original skull. I then have to cut small pieces of blue plastic to indicate the tissue depths over the specific areas on the skull. The skin and the muscle on the face are at different thicknesses in different areas and the markers tell us how thick the clay it should be in those areas. The eyes really help the face come alive. After the model is finished, I have to add coloring to the face. In the lips, for example, I use a soft red color. The final touch in this particular sculpture was adding the wig. It's pretty remarkable to see a face come alive from 3,000 years ago.